Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you've all had a wonderful day. Today's video is a book date. I have finished One Moment, One Morning by Sarah Rayner. Um, this is in my 19 books in 2019. I believe this was book eight off the top of my head. Don't hold me to it, but I believe it was book eight. Um, I will read you the back and then I will let you know when spoilers are going to occur. So it says, The 744 train from Brighton to London. Carriages packed with commuters. One woman occupies her time observing the people around her. Opposite, a girl applies her makeup. Across the aisle, a husband strokes his wife's hand. Further along, a woman flicks through a glossy magazine. Then, abruptly, everything changes. A man collapses, the train is stopped, an ambulance is called. For three passengers, that particular morning will never be the same again. So, I will not go into spoilers yet. I will just give you a brief overview. Um, so, there are three people on the train, three women, um, and four a reason I will later go into, um, and the man collapsing, they are drawn together and connected and this book follows their lives after that one event and how they all sort of come together. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of don't feel like you need to know any more before you read this book. If it's a book you're going to read and you don't want to hear the spoilers, I feel like that's all you need to know. Um, but I will say it was a good book but I probably wouldn't read it again. Um, once you kind of know the story for this one, I feel like that's kind of it. Um, I will go more into that with my spoilers, but it's a good read. It's not, where's, where's the quote? A real page turner, you'll want to inhale it in one breath from easy living. No, I feel like that's a lie. Um, carried along by the momentum of a suspense-filled yet touching story, this book drives to the core of human emotion. Now, suspense-filled, no, but it does, it does sort of pull you along with it. Um, but probably the best quote that describes this is from Waterstone's Books Quarterly, an intimate, thoughtful novel celebrating women's friendship and loyalty. And I feel like that is the best description. Right. So yeah, I recommend reading it, um, but I probably wouldn't read it again. For those of you that aren't staying for the spoilers, this is the book I've moved on to. I will talk about it more at the end, but if you're not staying, this is uh, Ken Casey's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, and it's a film with Jack Nicholson. Okay, right. For those of you that are staying for spoilers, let's get into it. Okay. So basically, the a man collapses, train is stopped, an ambulance called. Um, so basically, Karen is on the train with her husband, Simon. He has a heart attack and dies almost instantly. Across the train from her, the woman that is observing people is Lou. Um, she is a um, school counsellor for um, children that are sort of struggling with their emotions and things like that. And further along the train is Karen's best friend, Anna. Um, so basically, obviously, um, the train stopped. Karen is obviously rushed to the hospital with Simon, um, who unfortunately died on the train. Um, but obviously he's taken to the hospital for all that kind of stuff. Um, and Lou gets off the train and so does Anna. Obviously, they've never met each other before, um, and they get into a taxi and go off to London as they were going to work. Um, Anna then gets a phone call from Karen to say that Simon has died and goes back. But obviously, her and Lou have sort of started talking about things and, you know, sort of chatting about it all, etc. Um, and they sort of become kind of friends. It's more of a, I think uh, Anna owes Lou money for the taxi and she gives her a number and says, I'll just, you know, sort it out whenever. So the story kind of follows Karen coping with obviously the death of Simon and how she's going to look after the kids. Um, Anna, it flicks between the three of them, which I think it was really, it was done really well. It wasn't like Lou, Karen, Anna. It was done on times and days. Um, so here we are. So like 12.06, and I believe they are train times. Um, the way it's sort of done, the times that are placed out are train times. Um, but yeah, so Anna, it's how she supports Karen, how she sort of copes with 
the fact that Simon's dead, she was very close to him as well, and it follows how she copes with her other half, Steve, and his alcoholism, and, you know, sort of seeing her friend suffering and, you know, she's suffering but in a different way even though he's still there. Um, so that was quite an interesting sort of knock-on thing. And then Lou, um, Lou is gay, it's, it's based in Brighton, so Lou, Lou is gay and she, um, it, it sort of follows how she supports um, Anna through her relationship with Steve and how she also supports Karen in coming to terms with sort of the loss of Simon um, and they sort of all work together really nicely getting to know each other while their own lives are still sort of going on and their own things are sort of happening um, but Lou um, is sort of dealing with the fact that she hasn't told her mum that she's gay um, so there's that sort of underlying issue for her um, and yeah, basically it's just how they all come together to kind of support one another through their own sort of lives and issues and things like that. Um, as I said, it wasn't suspense filled and I have to say it wasn't a page turner. I mean, I picked it up because I wanted to finish it. I wanted to know what happened with Anna and, si and Steve and I wanted to know how Karen sort of coped with Simon not being around. I mean, the moments with Karen... Um, and obviously how she's sort of coping without Simon and sort of reliving past memories and things was really nicely done. It was re it was really sad, um, but it was really nicely done. Anna sort of coping with Steve and that, that was really interesting because it was kind of like, you know, she really should kick him out because he's becoming more and more of a disaster. But, you know, she doesn't want to. She feels like she can help him and things like that. And then with Lou, although... I wasn't overly interested in the fact she hadn't told her mum that she was gay or anything like that. But it was, I I honestly thought for most of the book that her and Anna would get so close. Anna would split up with her other half, Steve, and because Lou had sort of helped her through that, she'd maybe, you know, fall in love with Lou. Um, I was kind of hoping for that, I feel. I was a little bit concerned because there were some graphic sexy parts in here and I thought oh I'm not sure how they're gonna do the whole girl girl thing will it be done nicely or you know um because I feel like sometimes in books some of it can sound really like awkward or really vulgar so I was a little bit concerned about how they were gonna do that um but there wasn't really anything like that with Lou she did meet someone towards the end of the book but I felt that bit was kind of rushed. It was like, a, oh, we'll just put Lou's pieces together because she's sort of the last one. Um, but no, I, I thought it was a good read. I just wouldn't read it again. Once Simon had died at the beginning, that was kind of it for excitement. I mean, the only other bit I might say was a bit of a, oh, what's going to happen next is part where Anna and Steve actually talk about the fact that he's drinking lots and there was sort of a kickoff there. Um, but there wasn't really anything that made me think, oh, I need to know what's happening next. I need to read this book. It was just kind of like a, a character driven, you know, like, and this is, this is like, this is what's happened. This is how people are coping with it. But it was done really well. Um, I never felt bored and I never felt like I didn't want to finish it. It just took me a while to read because I knew there wasn't anything at the end that I was going to reach. You know, with like murder mysteries and things, you have you have your murder and then you have all the, the, all the suspense leading up to who did it. Whereas obviously this was, you know, just a, your event happened at the beginning and it's how it was sort of coped with over time. Um, but no, I mean, all in all... I thought it was a good book, I just wouldn't read it again. And I will be donating it to a charity shop unless any of any of the other ladies in the challenge want to give it a read. Um, but yeah, it was, it was good. I, I did like it. Um, I just think, obviously the, the relationship between Anna and Lou that I thought was going to happen didn't happen, so that for me was a little bit like, oh, I kind of wanted that to happen because they seemed like they were getting really close. But it was just like a friend thing, which was really nice at the same time. Like, you know, Karen needed Anna to support her, but Anna was sort of struggling with 
and the loss of a friend, um, her friend, her best friend being upset over the loss of her husband, the fact that Anna was dealing with the alcohol alcoholism of her partner. She didn't really have anyone to support her, so that's sort of where Lou came in, and I thought it was really nice. So yeah, one moment, one morning was very good, and it is one I will be donating. Um, now, as I said a little bit earlier. Um, I have moved on to Ken Kesey's uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, so I have started it. I'm about, uh, where are we? I'm about 16 pages in, so not that far into it. There is 255 pages. Um, so it's not a long book. Um, and it just says, Chief Bromden, a half American Indian, whom the authorities believe is deaf and dumb, tells the story of a mental institution ruled by Big Nurse on behalf of the all-powerful Combine. Into this terrifying grey world comes McMurphy, a brawling gambling man who wages total war on behalf of his coward fellow inmates. What follows is at once hilarious and heroic, tragic and, un and ultimately liberating. Since its first publication 14 years ago, Ken Kesey's astonishing first novel has achieved the status of a contemporary classic. Um, so yeah, I bought this, oh, I think I saw it in a charity shop ages ago, um, and I'm not going to lie to you, Jack Nicholson kind of gives me the freaks. He, I find him a really strange actor, I'm not sure how I feel about him, he's not ugly, his eyebrows are a bit scary, um, but I just find him a strange, a strange person to watch. He's one. He's not one that I would never watch a film that he's in, like Ben Stiller. I could, oh, I could quite happily swing for Ben Stiller. Um, but he's a strange actor. He he gives me the willies. Um, but Dre sort of said to me ages ago, he was like, oh, you know, we should watch this it's a really good film. I've seen it ages ago. It's great. It's great. And I was a little bit like, oh, it's got Jack Nicholson in it. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. Um, and I loved it. Like to begin with, I was a little bit like, mm, I'm not sure, you know, you know, the story takes a little while. And then once it got going, I was fully invested and I loved it. So I was on the hunt for the book, found it in a chat shop. As you can see, this one is a little bit old and battered. And it's got that typical sort of yellowy orange fade of pages. Um, but I'm hoping it's gonna be an easy read. The first 16 pages were a little bit like, ooh, and the font is tight. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how I get on with this. Um, I have finished the first Raven Boys book that I started reading with the lovely Nikki Pearson. Um, we are going to continue to read that series together, I believe. Don't hold me to it. She might change her mind because she reads so much faster than I do. Um, but I am probably going to count that book as one of my 19, 2019, because obviously I had to bin my Simon Pegg book. Um, but yeah, that is everything for me. We are on One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Take care and I'll see you guys soon. If you have read either of these, this one no spoilers please, this one spoil away if you want to then let me know what you thought. Take care and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!